What's up, everybody? Welcome to another amazing session of Peer Talk. This one is Peer Talk One on One. You know what? Somebody uh, commented the last one of the last episodes, mm -hmm. saying we always like he said. Um, I don't know if he or she, but the person said, you know, um, it's funny how we always start a bit. Uh, welcome to another amazing session of Peer Talk. <laughs> Actually, he said episode of Peer Talk. Uh, you know, I'm gonna tell you why. You know, because anytime we have an session, we always have amazing people around. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we kind of feel this epiphany that it's going to be amazing. You know what I mean? So you best believe that. <laughs> hey, right, man, Ma, today with me, I have one of the iconic members of Beer Talk, Mr. Sergeant Sekumane. No, Welcome you, to Peer Talk, bro. You appreciate it. Salute, salute, salute. I know. Yeah, man. What's going on? Not much, man. Doing good. Man, man it's been so. a while, man. Like this session shoot, man. Yeah, no, no. You know, it's, it's the one-on-one -on -one is like it's taking everybody away. Like, yeah, yo, so, but can't wait for us to have We can get you off. Yeah. It's good, man. So how is everything going? Family and everything good. Family is doing good, work is good, so life is good. That's good, man. That's good. Yeah, yeah man. So, like, you know, we've been doing, you know, it's the one on one, you know. Mm -hmm. And we talk to you guys about your amazing projects, amazing things that is going on, mm -hmm. you know, with you guys. So, you know, it's been amazing. We had a bit um, back spent the last time, Bible cut and all that. Yeah, that it was, was been amazing. Yourself, yeah, 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 it was good. It was good. All right. So, I will, uh, let's, let's get, to, get into it. Um, I will actually this, you know, um, you know, going up, <clears throat> we all have a mindset. You know what I mean? Sometimes, you know, our mindsets are driven by our society, could be our society, mm -hmm. you know, where we, from our peers, from family and all that, you know, but with all that, we transition, mm -hmm. you know, over time, being a kid over time, mm -hmm. we go through phases, right? So I want to ask you this, you know, what, what was your mindset when you were growing up? Um, growing up, you know, I think this might be true for a lot of people. Right. You know, growing up, you know, doctors and lawyers are things that everybody is saying, oh, I want to be a doctor, yeah. I be a lawyer. You know, but um, I think growing up for me, I wanted to be a doctor. Oh, for real? Yeah, yeah like early ages and all that. Wow. That was, you know, one of my dream to become a doctor. Mm -hmm. But along the way, there was, you know, depending on how, what kind of obstacles you face along the way, right. that could change. You know, so um, growing up, my mindset was to become a doctor. <laughs> wow. But eventually, this is what I found myself doing. Wow. So, but again, that was a dream, you know, so. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's crazy how, you know, our aspirations change over time, you know. Yeah. Sometimes it's driven by whatever you see. If you see a doctor in the neighborhood who is always like, you know, you, went to, you go to a hospital, you see the doctor, or you go to school, your, your favorite teacher, you be like, you know, I want to be a teacher, or you see, you know, we, we change, we change a lot, Absolutely. but, Absolutely. yeah, but it's a good thing we have those kind of things in our communities, Absolutely. because, like, we, we, kids look up to things they see in their environment, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. they want to be, like, so exactly. it's very good for us to have things, positive things around us. Is important. I think I'm yeah. not on that too because um, my dad is a dentist. Right. You know, and my most of my family they they in the medical field. Medical field. So I think that also shaped my early you know, mm. ambition to become a doctor or at least to go into the medical field. Medical field. You know, but that never materialized. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so yeah. You know, yeah. Environment actually has some impact some on impact on you. Some of our decisions. Absolutely. And, yeah. Absolutely. Perspectives and stuff. So no no doubt about that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Wow, that's good. So, you was in the U.S. Army, right? The yeah. military. Yep. Technically, still. Still, you you're still in there? Technically, yes. Oh, for real? You know, because I, I think... have like eight years. So okay. I did, I did six years, and I'm doing two years inactive. They call it active oh, and inactive. Inactive. So you was active. Yes. Oh wow. Yeah. So, wow. So tell us that experience, man. Because you know, man, it was yeah. a crazy journey, man. You know, coming to America and then going to the military. You mm. know. Uh, traveling around the U.S. is is it's been an eye opener for me. Absolutely. You know, I, I met all kind of no people doubt. from all corners of America and mm. different part of the world. You know, so going through the ranks also that was very interesting. <laughs> mm. You know, so I started at a very low rank and then eventually made my own my way to, all the way to sergeant. You know, wow. so where I actually I was responsible for at least four to five people. You know, making sure 
they had their all their day to day needs and stuff like that. So the experience was really really interesting. Yeah, that was crazy, it man. Is, yeah. I, I always I always <laughs> love the army. You know what I mean? Yeah, when I see yeah. you guys in the uniform. It's, you know, it's kind of fun, you know, yeah. when people see it. Yeah, it's doing kind of it, fun. you know. Yeah, yeah to know. you, it kind of sucks. It yeah. becomes, you know, monotonous. But yeah. like, um, yeah, it, it was a great experience for me, and mm. it shaped a lot of what I'm doing right now today. Mm -hmm. You know, because in the army, they teach you, you know, how to wake up early in the morning. You know, wow. respect for rank. You know, respect for your elders. You know, so those those kind of things are kind of not new, but in the army style, is kind of new. Mm. You know, so I, I I was able to learn the bad from the good. You know, what would benefit me here and not by that. So wow. that that would really help. That's yeah. crazy. I'm yeah. the respect like when you go there. Like, no, I I remember you know like if I, uh, one time I went to I was traveling so at the airport mm -hmm. so there was this army guy. You know, soon as he. Sort of like everybody started like <laughs> shaking his hands, yeah, yeah. you know. Thanks Thank for, you the, for your service. Yeah, thanks, yeah, you, you get yeah, that like a million yeah. times. I don't know, right? so <laughs> it's that's, cool. That's that, kind of cool. Yeah, that's one of the yeah. fun thing about it. Yeah. And most of the times, especially for me, because I, I, well, I, I, I remember when I was traveling to Chicago one time, mm -hmm. but I was running almost my flight. My gate was closing. Yeah. You know, so I was running through the airport, and then finally. I get to my gate and then people were entering. You know how they go first class, second yeah, class, and all yeah. these things. You know, so normally they'll call the military force. You know, so because I was running so much, I was tired. Mm. Once I get there and then people are boarding, I knew they 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 like they call those folks before everybody else. I just went to the gate and, and saw them my and I said, hey, you know, I just need to enter. They, oh, why? I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm a US Army member. So they just wow. to enter there. So, so those That's are some cool. of the benefits, you yeah. know. It's, it's kind of fun. That's cool, yeah. though. That's really <laughs> cool. You know. It's a side project, but it yeah, was fun. Absolutely. I think, you know, the army, you know, they play an important role in our society, you know. Yeah, they protect, you know, any country, you know, their their, their, their safety depends yeah. on it. Yeah. Depends on the army. So, you guys deserve every respect. Yeah, you know what I mean? Appreciate it, man. Yeah, yeah. salute too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was an interesting journey, yeah. and, and I, yeah. Uh, I, I'm, I'm glad I actually did it. You wow. know, I, 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 I had very good experiences and then a lot of good things mm. came out of it. Wow. So yeah, I'm really, really glad I would do it all over again. You know, wow. so it's it's been a great experience. And that's that's awesome. So, but then um, because your experience, uh, we all know, United States, uh, United States Army, mm -hmm. uh, the military here is the one of the greatest, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, you having done your training over here so is it something that is okay or is something that you can do if you go to like places like gambia who is a you know has a low military you know service i mean i'm, I'm not going to say the law but then it, you know, it's obvious the united states army is a, a little bit better, oh, better yeah, than them absolutely. so is it okay like if you say oh i want to go train you know gambian army not being in the army, but at least the knowledge you have in the United States sure. Army, yeah. then to go there and then say, you know what, I, I want to share my knowledge. Is that possible? You from here? Uh, it might be, but it has to be some kind of partnership. Mm. You know, and I don't with the I United don't. States Army or and the, well with the okay. Gambian Army. But you cannot just say as a solo. No, okay. no. Well, I can go there, but I cannot go on behalf of the United States United Army. Army. Okay. That's, that's two different things, right? Yeah. I know how to do this. I can go back to Gambia and say, hey, this is what I know how to do, mm -hmm. and I want and I want to offer my help. Okay. That is possible. That's but I can okay. go that's there and say, hey, yeah. I am representing United no, States no. Army. That would be yeah, 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 of course. You know, that's I have not. to go. You have to get through channel, channel command. Absolutely. Yeah. But I, I also realize, you know, um, the type of armies are different a little bit mm. because even their ranks are a little bit different. That's right. And also, um, I don't understand much about the government army and mm. the way they operate, but I know it's based on the British, you know, British system. system. Yeah. yeah. So, which is a little bit different, you know, from what we do around here. Uh, yeah. That's I think the, the other difference between, um, again, I don't know much about government army, but um, here, your 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 service in the army is based on a certain profession. You know, like for example, I work in an engineer battalion. Mm -hmm. You know, we do um, float bridges. Wow. We build for, uh, float bridges across gaps. For example, you have a small river, you know, a small gap oh, yeah. that the army need to cross. You know, wow, that's deep. In there. It is, you know, wow. yeah, it is. It's it's really fun, and wow. interesting. You it know, is. So, <laughs> yeah. 
So um, it's based on a certain profession that mm. you go through basic training. After basic training, you go through individual uh, training. You know, if you're going to be a doctor, a nurse, an engineer, whatever you do for them, they will train you through that, and then you graduate, then go to a unit, and then practice that in the unit. Wow. So in in gaming army, it might be a little bit different. Yeah. You know, everything might be based on infantry. Again, I don't know this. I'm just mm -hmm. speculating. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's the difference. So here. Coming out of the army, you can actually transition to civilian. Something else, yeah. And then, you know, have a job. Have a career, yeah. 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 I've worked with a lot yeah. of veterans. Like, yep. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's amazing, man. Yes. Well, thanks for your service, bro. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. So now, let's um, swift to cloud secure. Yep. Man, how is how is it? What what's, what is the new? What was going on? What was new thing about? Uh, uh, so the new thing is, I think mm -hmm. it's like a couple of weeks ago. I have a lot of requests from gamers yeah. who living around Seattle area. Okay, you know people who buy a house. You know they want to network their house. So basically, they have two. If you have four on the second floor, right? You know most of the ne uh, network e equipment or a modem, gas modem would be in the fourth floor. So most of the people they don't have internet upstairs. So mm. a lot of people run into this issue. You go upstairs, your signal is really really slow. So they want to network their house in a way that, you know, they have internet on all floors. So we added the service that we actually do that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. So it's like you have, it, how do you get the modem? It's so, to, yeah. The modem will be given to you from Comcast, for okay. example, because mm -hmm. uh, I think Comcast is the, uh, the most, uh, the biggest around here. Right. Say for example, you go to Comcast and then you want internet at your home, right? Mm -hmm. They give you a modem, but this modem is not just a modem. I think people are used to saying modem, but it's actually a modem, a router, and a Wi-Fi. It's three in one. Mm. Yeah. So normally that because it's three in one and it's a cheap one, Comcast would just, you know, they just try to save money. They give you that. Yeah. That that one modem cannot extend, you know, very far, or it cannot penetrate through the wall to go upstairs. Mm. So what we do, there is another um, another device. We buy a, a separate a modem separate. This one is not three in one. It's just separate. We buy a modem and you buy a router and a Wi-Fi together. That will be separate. So mm. you receive with a modem and then you route and then we have a satellite one or they call it an extender. So then we can put the extender upstairs and then they talk to each other. Then they, that will spread Wi-Fi in the entire home. Wow. Yeah. Just so you can have it. I don't want to be technical, but yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> that is okay. a very modest explanation. Um, right. Basically, to have internet coverage in your entire house, entire house. even in your um, garage or you know um, your patio or your backyard, you can have Wi-Fi. You can have Wi-Fi. A lot of people have been struggling. I get a bunch of calls say, "Hey, you know, I have internet at home, but only in my living room, mm -hmm. my sitting room. It does happen. When I go it upstairs, I don't have any internet." You know, so that is a problem, and then that's what we're doing to fix it. So you are you working with Comcast on that? Oh, or no. it's just we're not working with Comcast. Good. This is ourselves. Good. Um, if you want that service, basically, what do you do? Call us, and then once you call us, we come in there. Mm. You know, see how big your house is. Right. Three thousand square feet, two thousand square feet, one thousand five hundred square feet. Based on that, we can de uh, determine a device. Hey, this is what is going to cover your entire house. Wow. Yeah. You know, so and that that also saves you money because with Comcast you're actually renting the modem, it's not yours. Yeah. You rent the modem, I think it's like eleven, ten dollars, whatever. Yeah. Uh, you know, some, so some, some like now that you buy your own equipment, mm -hmm. you free, you pretty much you free yourself from that. You know, a year Actually. you can save like hundred dollars or hundred twenty dollars, two years, yeah, you know, four hundred dollars. So Wow. That's amazing. That's crazy, y'all. Oh. Y'all doing great, bro. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Thank you, man. Yeah. So, um, for those like um, for those people who probably maybe watching this for the first time, our show, you know, and we talk about gum class security many, many times. Not many, many times, but a few times. Mm -hmm. So, um, what are the services that you do for the benefit of people? Someone who just who is just watching this. Yeah, so um, basically, like I said in a previous episode, yeah. Gum Cloud Secure, maybe, you know, if somebody hear the name, they might actually, they might give you some idea of what we do. Mm. We are Gambians, we're cloud engineers and security right. engineers, mm -hmm. you know, that we want to offer our service to people in the Seattle area mm. and anywhere in the U.S. because we can actually work remotely as well. Wow. So basically what we do, if we have any, any home networking issues, like you say, the Wi-Fi issue, right. if you can have Wi-Fi upstairs or your Wi-Fi is low, we can, we can assist in those areas. But we also work with businesses. 
you know, small businesses in the Seattle area. Mm. You know, it, it's not limited to only, only the immigrant community, but it's any business. And also, if you have a technological issue, we can you can contact us, and then we can see if we can help you. We build websites, we host websites, you know. So we have guys with range of background that can pretty much do most of the, you know, challenges or um, issues that you have in your technical technological issues that you have in your business. Wow. Yeah. So hosting website, can you expound on that? Yeah, hosting website. You know, um, not to get technical. So basically. Um, you have something called, you know, GoDaddy, right? GoDaddy, So yeah. GoDaddy, and maybe let me put this into gambling context, let's say Gamtel. Mm. You know, Gamtel, they do internet service provider, but they also yeah. host websites. That means you, if you go to a developer to build a website for you, they develop the website for you, you take that website file, and then give it to Gamtel, so that when I go to www.alagi.com, mm. then, that your browser is going to send it to Gamtel and then load that website from Gamtel server to your browser basically download it mm. yeah so where your website is actually sitting physically sitting that's what, what we mean by hosting wow yeah I mean you host it physically you host it. It's on, yeah wow. it's on our service so it's like if I have a problem like if you build a website for me yeah and if, if the website crashes you know, I just have to call. Yeah, right. Yeah. Hey, so you right guys want to fix it? Yeah. Wow. So we, we develop a site for you and then we host it for host you. For it's you. like a one shot for everything. Oh. You know, previously people build a website and then host it on another platform. On a platform, yeah. yeah. We, we, we do everything. Wow. Yeah. Because that's what I'm used to. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's amazing, man, bro. Man, it's so chilling that, you know, such kind of technology from coming from someone from. Gambia, mm -hmm. you know, our own community, our own brothers and sisters, you know, I mean, that's amazing, bro. It is. Sure, yeah, yeah, amazing. Bro. I think, you know, um, for you people, you know, coming up with this kind of idea, I think we need to have a more of a, I, usually, actually, today I was thinking about it, I'm like, you know what, these people like, see who and I know a lot of people who are in the tech field over here, they're engineers and stuff, you guys need to come together, man, and then form a big thing, like, yo, you know, in it could be an electric in, electrical engineer, a software engineer, or whatever engineer. Absolutely. You know, you guys will have a kind of have a, like a, an organization or a team that you know you're gonna set up, and then create something unique mm -hmm. for us that we're gonna like you know take um, pride in. Absolutely. You know, I mean, it's possible. I, I, I it's totally possible. agree on that. Yeah. You know, um, like I said. Um, a community is better than an individual. Yeah, absolutely. You know, a group of people doing something together is mm -hmm. better than an individual. Two heads are better than one. Absolutely. You know, so, um, I think like for gunmen, again, maybe this is from my own understanding of our society, but people are always shy. They don't want to show. You know, sometimes we need to show ourselves. You know, mm -hmm. not in a bad way, not in a bragging way. But no. again, you know, um, we can come together. You know, at least even we don't build something, but we can mentor, mentor. other people. Yeah. You know, to yeah, venture into important. technology and do yeah. the same things that mm -hmm. we are doing, and then um, it might benefit them and their families. Absolutely. You know, so no doubt. again, that's one of my areas that I'm very passionate. I like to mentor mm -hmm. you know, younger generation coming up. Wow. And also, yeah. That's amazing, man. Yeah. Thanks for that, man. Thank you. Appreciate yeah, it. man. You guys are doing great, for real. All right. So, you have another project in Gambia. Yep, I have two projects coming up in Gambia. Yeah, so, you know, so those are those are moving really fast as, as wow. we speak right now. <laughs> That's what's up, yeah. man. So uh, your internet, you turn on is it a Wi-Fi thing? Internet. So or? yeah, I can. It's an internet service provider. Okay. Um, just like Comcast is here. Comcast. Yeah, because I know oh. this, when you say internet, you know the terms and yeah. technologies, you know, get get carried away a lot, you know. But we we are also an internet service provider. So that means if you need internet in the Gambia, you can come to us and tell her, hey, you know, we need internet and then we can, you know, give you internet. Wow. Yeah. By the way, man, congratulations you, on your... Thank you, appreciate you it. Have the, you have a license already. Yes, yeah, so right? um, I think it's like three weeks ago, mm -hmm. you get approved for a license after wow. one year of, you know, um, going back and forth. After one year? Yeah, it took one year, you know, interestingly, because wow. last December we sent our application. Yeah, because I remember, you know, the last time, you know, when you was telling me about this, that was like almost a year now. Yeah, you go, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? I, I'm going to uh, name and say By the way, Sada yep. Arms, man, <laughs> the realest dude ever, man. That's my dude over there. Yeah. Yeah, so um, 
Man, that was crazy. Since then, you know, we talk about it. I was like, I, I thought it was. Yeah. Dope, man. In, in in reality, it was yeah. about two years because 2018, yeah. I started. I went there and we do some survey and then try to understand the business and you know from a gaming perspective. Mm. And then um, I came last year. I went and then we start the application process. So they said uh, next year is gonna be the implementation. Wow. You know, so man, it's. That- that's yes. big though like <laughs> i was thinking about it i'm like yo yeah. is he gonna because when i when you think about the game and settings you know we still have this one percent mm-hmm. you know you know um i don't know how to put in but uh the one percent um elites mm-hmm. you know it's like if you don't go through me you probably not go because that 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 is big yeah you know it's, it's to like have it to like have that, that you yeah, know what i mean yeah. i mean i was thinking about it i was like man i don't know how to do is gonna pull this out but it's, it's not, not easy. gonna be that easy True. so tell me your chance so like i said you know mm-hmm. in gambia do we have the one percent like the elite people who have the authority who, who have the authority you know to do stuff you know sometimes if you don't go through them such things won't be possible for you you know what I mean? A thing like an internet provider, that's not yeah. an easy thing, it's, though. It's, that's big, you know? It's challenging. That's really you know, big. Yeah. So what was your challenges, you know? I think, if, yeah. personally, from my personal experience, um, the challenge is not having everything in black and white. And what I mean by this, is, for example, here, mm-hmm. if you go to Comcast, you want internet service, right. or, you, or you go to, um, let's say, FCC, you want to be an internet service provider. Right. They lay out everything. They say, "Hey, this is what you need. If you provide us with this, mm. you can get this." That's right. It's just like a condition, right? Mm-hmm. You met these conditions, you get this. You know, so, but what? What personally I found out was, you know, um, not everything is written in black and white. At least not to what I understand. So that was a challenge. You know, um, things are not published in a more detailed manner to say, "Hey, Alaji, if you have this." You can have this, mm. but you can't tell me if you have this and I have that, and then you tell me, oh well, you need this also. I'm like, whoa, wait, what? No, but this is what he told me, and I think this is, you know, um, it's not only the you know, internet service license, yeah, but it's it, this issue is seen all all around in Gambia, all Gambian, most de- most departments, you mm. run into these issues. You know, you want a land document. You know, people tell you go to this office, go to this office. There is no clear yeah. definition of, you know, this is what you need to get this. And I think um, that's my biggest challenge. The second one would be on time. You know, time that it takes to process a license. I think that is that's a long time. You know, um, because if something that is coming to, if somebody is coming to, you know, venture into a field, or if somebody is coming to open a big company in the Gambia that is going to employ. 10, 20, you know, 15, 15 20, yeah, 20, yeah, yeah. hundreds of people. That should be you know, fast track. That should be, yeah. you know, um, that should be really, really fast tracked. You know, you ha- I mean, you have the manpower. If you don't have the manpower, then what's going on? Yeah. You know, so I think those those kind of issues, they're little tiny issues, mm-hmm. you know, but as an investor, you know, hey, I can invest my money here, you know, or venture into something else. That would not require all of this. Yeah, all of it, yeah. You know, but um, I feel like those areas need to be looked at you know, and then if they can take those things seriously and then treat everybody as a serious investor, even mm-hmm. though you are Gambian, you know, mostly Gambians treat foreign investors with better, you know, service yeah. than us, you know. <laughs> no doubt. So normally when you come for some people think, well, these guys yeah. are just talking. Yeah. You know, um, I ran into that issue there. You know, somebody thought I was just coming to just brag and then figure out, you know, um, when I go back, I won't. I won't. So mm-hmm. that's how long it takes. I went uh, two years ago to do a survey last year to start the process, and then you know um, wow. this year we're doing the implementation. Implementation. Yeah. So this year you guys gonna uh, be made everything. Yep. Gonna start kickstart. Yep. Right. yep. Okay. Um, I bought uh, because during the license process, halfway through, when we are sure that we were gonna get the license, I bought a lot of equipment, and those equipment are with me here. And then finally, after we get approved last week, I went to get you know half of my equipment. Wow. Well, yeah. So still have a long way to go because we covered and everything, mm. shipped that to Gambia again, and then just so it's gonna, it's going to take us a, you know a good four, five, six months before we can actually okay. even start offering service. Yeah. You know, but but we, what we do that that is that is even a fast track. Yeah. Wow. You know, because it's not easy to build um a network. They call it a network mm-hmm. backbone. So that's, <laughs> that's, 
it takes a lot of you know, yeah. manpower and knowledge absolutely. to do that. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's amazing, man. Thank yes. you, man. Thanks for that, man. It's doable, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, like you, you know, said, it's, it's a passion, man. Yeah, it's you know? a passion, yep. Because you look at gaming society, mm. and all these also started, and I mentioned this in other episodes, you know, it started when I went there as a challenge. Mm. That's a problem, you know, and we, we have to have solutions. You know, when there's a problem, you come up with ways to fix the problem. Absolutely. You know, and internet, if you look at it, you know, internet would become just like electricity someday in Gambia also. Because here it is. Mm -hmm. You know, you cannot go to a single household in the US. <laughs> you know, that doesn't have internet. In if they don't have internet, I'm like, I can't I can even, you know, rent a house here. Because I need to, I need internet to work. Mm -hmm. Most people need internet to work. And, you know, this is also going to come to Gambia. It's a matter of time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, so, um, the gap is there and then somebody need to step in it is a big you know? a gap especially yeah. like you said this COVID thing you know what i mean yeah. it's yeah. changing a lot so absolutely you know absolutely. there's going to be a time that yeah. you know people won't go to offices you know oh, yeah. the homes absolutely. are going to be uh, yeah. just have your internet and then do your thing from a gaming perspective also mm -hmm. is internet is going to unlock a lot of opportunities yeah. for younger generation absolutely. You know? um because if you look the world is a global world oh absolutely you could be here working remotely mm -hmm. in another continent so i think i think you know from my from my own perspective that's what i'm way i'm looking at you know youth can develop themselves using the internet mm -hmm. you know and you can open opportunities for them and then nobody would be saying hey okay if all these kids graduate from co college or from high school where are they going to be going now you know we have internet they can apply works you know remotely or somewhere mm -hmm. else in the u.s China, yeah. you know so yeah i think it's gonna it's gonna open a lot of doors you know for younger generation Absolutely, because yeah. if you look at it, you know, a lot of people are living in Asia and still working oh, yeah. for the United yep. States, Absolutely. you know, all over the world. So, it's yeah, it's a perfect example. Exactly. I have co-workers in Philippines. They yeah. never stepped their foot, their foot in the U.S. In the U.S., yeah. You know, so Internet, it has a lot of potential, mm -hmm. you know, but we need a reliable Internet service. Yeah. You know, that is decentralized, you know, not controlled by a few people that, you know, charge you any amount of money. Amount of money, yeah. You want poor people. You know, if you want to charge somebody for like, you know, I don't know how much they charge for their megabytes, or which is kind of ridiculous. So a gaming standard is it, is really expensive. No. You know, so yeah, it's interesting. It's a bit easy that. though. The world is evolving, man. It is. Everywhere you know, is, yep. You know, internet should be a problem. Absolutely. No. Not not this day and age. No. Because we have, you know, the you have advanced equipment that can decentralize and you know. Um, serve communities in a better way right so um yeah it, it, it's really interesting wow. we we'll see what's gonna happen <laughs> yeah that's amazing like like i was telling back the other day you know when we go to gambia mm -hmm. sometimes to me you know people always complain oh gambia this and this and that but i would say you know we're not being fair to gambia mm -hmm. because that's gambia that's not united states absolutely that's absolutely. gambia if you go there hey one of the reasons why we came over here because we didn't have mm -hmm. those kind of amenities or those kind of facilities over there mm -hmm. and that kind of trigger triggered our you know immigration mm -hmm. to do better to go and get better mm -hmm. whether it is education or whatever we want to better ourselves mm -hmm. so the best thing is if you go back like you said, you look around, you see a gap, mm -hmm. you know, you'd be like, you went there and then in and then was your issue. You was like, hey, I think I can do something about this. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So anything that you know you can do something about, mm -hmm. you know, before complaining or blaming, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. yeah, no. do it. That's mm -hmm. you. If you, yeah, you, you playing a big role, a bigger role, actually, you yeah. know, because mm -hmm. Internet is not it's not something small. It's, 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 it's not a small. big deal. Absolutely. Yeah. So absolutely. you providing that for the community, man, that's a big win. It is. It is. Thanks for that. You know, you know I, I, like you say, you know, mm -hmm. um, we can have a, a problem. Yeah. Complain about it. Yeah. And do not figure out ways to solve it. Yeah. And then the problem will still be there. Yeah, it's still gonna be there. <laughs> Nobody's gonna you know, fix it. Oh, we can have a problem yeah. and then come together mm. and try to figure out how to solve it. Uh -huh. And I think um, you know this this is a big issue when it comes to you know our own gaming culture. You know when we go, especially um, me when I go there for the past few years. When I go there, you know roads are not good. You know traffic is not organized. Mm. You know um, food paths are not there. People are walking all over the place. Who is gonna change these things? And everybody's sitting down like somebody's gonna fly down 
yeah, fix it, yeah, or the government need to fix it. Well, yeah. the government don't have the capacity. Mm. That's a fact. What As is fact, the government? <laughs> yeah. Want me to yeah. say? It? <laughs> I mean, I, I, that is political. That's the fact. But we, no. if you look at yeah. the facts, mm-hmm. the government is depending on what? Aid. Aid. You know, yeah. tourism a little bit, uh-huh. agriculture. Uh, yeah. You know, but um, a lot. as Gambians, like we need to be spontaneous in this kind of you know uh, problem solving. Mm. You know, we cannot expect things. You go to Gambia, like, a lot. Of, I have friends. People build massive buildings mm-hmm. in the Gambia, but guess what? They walk to their house. It's terrible. It's terrible. You have a nice car, you can barely drive it. Mm. These are issues. These are pressing issues. If then, if we don't solve them today, mm. you know, it's gonna be a huge problem next ten years, twenty years. Yeah. You know, the society is not going to be organized. It's not. Never. You know, so, um, yeah, I I think that area, you know, even folks that are from here going to vacation and stuff like that, we are very intelligent people. Absolutely. You know, people who no are doubt. doing great, great stuff here. Mm. We, we can we can take it back. We can take it back. Absolutely. You know, make changes. Yeah. You know, I think somebody should be sitting out there who is a traffic engineer or something. They can mm. help us with the traffic. Because mm-hmm. Gambia, I don't know about you, man. I sometimes want to work. I know. You know, there's literally zero control over traffic. You know, I, I don't know how, you know, thinking about it, living there, that would be very stressful. You know, mm-hmm. it, would, it would have some kind of toll on the mental health. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, but somebody needs to come and solve that. Mm-hmm. And it's not going to be some, somebody from the U.S., somebody from... It has to be Gambians. Mm-hmm. We need to take ownership of our own problems. Problem yeah. You know, yeah. so I think those are the kind of motivation. I can complain about how internet is not good or how it's expensive in the Gambia and come back to the U.S. and enjoy internet and then go, go back to Gambia next year and continue complaining about it. Or I can do something about it. You know, so we're taking the fight to them. Absolutely, <laughs> man. <laughs> That's very true because... You know, a lot of people actually, like you said, if they go to Gambia, we complain, we complain about <laughs> everything. But then we'll be like, some people will actually will say that, man, I have, I have this in America. Mm-hmm. I have a, a company in America. They'll be proud about that. You know what I mean? Which is a good thing. Absolutely. It's a, it's a very good thing. But then how about take some of that to yeah, Gambia yeah. too? Start something. Start something. You know, it doesn't have to be massive. Yeah. You know, but start something. Yeah. You know, what you're doing, you're changing lives. And number two, you're creating jobs. Yeah, creating jobs. You know, so um, we all complain how mm-hmm. youths are sitting down. Yeah. Well, did we give them the right the opportunity? Right mm-hmm. You know, so well, all, to all of those things, yeah. you know, we have to look at it mm-hmm. in, a, in a more um, broader perspective, yeah. you know, from a different perspective. Mm-hmm. You know, from the, if you're from here going there, mm-hmm. that is from your perspective. But how about people there, you know, in their perspective? So, you know, as yeah. Gambians, you know, let's let's try to fix these issues. Issues, yes. I, I personally, I don't think the government is going to do it hmm. because even they they want to, I don't think they have the cash flow to do it. Hmm. You know, even they have the cash flow, I don't think is on their priority list. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So this is what we have seen in African governments, you know. So, but individual citizens need to step up and then solve some of this. No problems. doubt, no doubt. You know, you know, we always complain about the Chinese, the Lebanese, and all that. You know, the reason why they're there because they there's those gaps, yeah, and no absolutely. one is filling those gaps. Yeah. 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 You know, uh, they're gonna be there. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. But when we, when we, t- because I, I, I always say that even we're going to start with a synergy, we're going to start with something that yeah, we all going to yeah, come together, yeah. you know, it like-minded people. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, because those businesses, you know, it's not like one person who is doing it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a collective, you know, business. It's, it's been, it's built by people who are like the same, like I said, the same mindset, you know, and then they want to grow, man. I'm like, yeah, let's go to Gambia. That's a gap. So it's for absolutely, me, we need to do that too. Yeah, for me, like, you know, as a Gambian youth mm-hmm. in America, yeah. one of the biggest mistakes I see, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of folks in the diaspora are doing, everybody want to build a house in Gambia. No doubt. <laughs> Everybody, yeah. it doesn't matter who it is, their first priority is to build a house in Gambia, which is okay. Mm-hmm. But you build a house somewhere that doesn't have, you know, a good running water service. Mm. It doesn't have good electricity. It doesn't have good internet. It doesn't have good hospitals. Literally, what service do we have in the Gambia? Mm. People are importing food from the U.S. They buy food here and put them in a container. Container, yeah. Because yeah. The food service is not, it's not what uh-huh. they want. Dental services. 
So who is going to change these things? All of these are gaps. And you have people here who are knowledgeable in those areas. They can start something there. You don't have to be based in the Gambia. But be ambitious, you know, have a vision for Gambia. You know, government is not going to come and then fill all these gaps. Huh. Individual citizens need to step up and then create a lot of competition. And then we go as a society. You know, otherwise, it's going to be complain, 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 mm -hmm. complain. You know, and none of these are solutions. And two weeks ago, I was looking at all this flooding and all these things. I mean, mm. I'm like, wow. You know, somebody has to solve this issue. Yes, absolutely. And it's Gambians mm -hmm. that, have, that need to solve it. No doubt. No yeah. doubt. So. Wow. Thanks, man. Maybe next time, before somebody starts to build a house, think about investing. You know, house is a good investment, but chances are a lot of people build a house in the Gambia. You have a watchman sitting there. Yeah. You, you can go there for like a year. Yeah, yeah. And then nine months, the house is just sitting Empty. there mm. doing nothing. Mm. You know, or you can invest, start a business. You know, and then employ you there, and then you what? Same time making money. Oh. You know, I think that's that's somewhere that something that people need to start looking at. Looking at, yeah. You know, you can build a house, but also try to invest in that. That's important. You know, yeah, 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 absolutely. Wow. So talking about uh, um, dental service, you have in a dental. You trying to yeah. build a dental clinic over there? Yes. So Damn, my bro. Family's, <laughs> my family is a dent. Wow. They, they're a dentist. Mm -hmm. You know, um, three of my brothers are dentists, and my father is a dentist too. Mm -hmm. You know, my younger brother, who is, I think. You know, he has been a qualified dentist at age probably 16, 17. What? Yeah, he's currently going to university, so he's a qualified dentist at high school. You know, because he's been working with my father for a long, long time. You know, so um, I went there last year. They're working for people, which I feel like, you know what? You know, that doesn't make sense. If they're qualified, they know how to do the job. You know, let me just come back here and then we start something. So last year I came back. You know, look around. I find some dental equipment. You know, um, that I bought from somebody who was going out of business, and then I shipped to them. You know, so now they they're in the process of starting their own dental lab, and then do cleaning, whitening, and all these services that are available here in the gaming community at an affordable price, too. You know, because if you look at, I, I know the services are there, mm -hmm. but sometimes the equipment, you know, um, oh, nice. you, I mean. I always challenge people in this, gaming use are not lazy, you know, is if you have to look things from that perspective, I can guarantee, take something to Gambia or take a business and then say, hey, I want to hire people. Well, if people, if nobody show up, then you can brand them as lazy. Mm -hmm. but I can guarantee 20, 100 people are going to show up in your door. You know, we here that have the little cash flow need to give them opportunity by opening businesses there. You know, employ 10 people. If you employ 10 people. How many game means are in the diaspora? Thousands, a lot. right? Mm -hmm. Even 60% of those game means start a business in Gambia. And I know it's not easy to start it's a not. business in mm -hmm. Gambia. There's a lot of challenges. But what is the world without challenge? <laughs> it doesn't exist. Absolutely. You know, it would be paradise. Yeah. So you, control is a big issue. But again, it's a challenge that you need to figure out. You know, we all need to start investing in Gambia in terms of business. You know, put the fight. Because everybody's complaining our business is com controlled by foreigners, mm. you know, and there's a long history to that. But again, you know, we can slowly start venture into these things and challenge them, you know, challenge them, you know, as a citizen, you know, as a local, and then you go from there. Wow. You know, I think we, we need to create job opportunities for you. No doubt, no doubt. You know, um, we can yeah. expect you to go and then doing be a laborer. That's child abuse <laughs> Absolutely. I'm saying yeah you know you wouldn't do that but you're blaming somebody else somebody else doing that. Yeah. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. everybody want a better life for yourself mm -hmm. you know we need to start investing in Gambia create high paying jobs high paying jobs you that's know, what I want to hear high paying jobs absolutely bro they need to and you know when we employ them it's not like okay I have a store you be in a store you be a cashier in the store and you be there forever no I want you to grow yeah, so the only way for you to be able to make uh, help somebody grow mm -hmm. is like you said high paying jobs you know what i mean absolutely, absolutely man thank you so much bro for that man that was a vision man that was like super like yeah. cool man that was dope bro wow but then we all know Gambia. you know i mean i don't know of now but before people are not um you know um conscious about the uh uh, dental service, you know, the only 
you know, when I was in Gambia, and you know, the only time, you know, if I have to go to the dentist is when my tooth is aching or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's the only time. time. But cleaning, I don't, even, I don't even, I even know that people clean that day when I was in Gambia. Yeah, so until you show up in the U.S. Exactly. So how is that? Do you think that's something that people are now conscious about? In oh Gambia yeah, or absolutely. Yeah. Um, to my surprise, because I didn't know the industry a lot, right. you know, so they know the industry. To my surprise, there's a high demand for that. You know, um, you have people that are doing it there today, but again, Gambia is not is small and you know geographically, but right. it's, it's two million people. You know, so if you look at average Gambian, I would say you know um, one one in ten Gambians clean their teeth regularly. You know, a lot of people don't have access to affordable dental services. Right. You know, so I think this is going to be a game changer because we want to make it so local, you know, that, you know, a local person can understand, wow, I need to clean my feet. You know, that is something um, that's going to be, especially the younger one, we want to have a family package.